Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, the, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. O give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have put my trust in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou of very faithfulness hast caused me to be troubled. O let thy merciful kindness be my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. 
O let thy loving mercies come unto me that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be confounded, for they go wickedly about to destroy me, but I will be occupied in thy commandments. Let such as fear thee and have known thy testimonies be turned unto me. O let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul hath longed for thy salvation, and I have a good hope because of thy word. Mine eyes long saw for thy word, saying, O when wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou be avenged of them that persecute me? The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are true. They persecute me falsely. O be thou my help. They had almost made an end of me upon earth, but I forsook not thy commandments. O quicken me after thy loving kindness, and so shall I keep the testimonies of thy mouth. O Lord, thy word endureth for ever in heaven. Thy truth also remaineth from one generation to another. Thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinance, for all things serve thee. If my delight had not been in thy law, I should have perished in my trouble. I will never forget thy commandments, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, O oh, save me, for I have sought thy commandments. The ungodly laid wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I see that all things come to an end, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Lord, what love have I unto thy law, all the day long is my study in it. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than my teachers, for thy testimonies are my study. I am wiser than the aged, because I keep thy commandments. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep thy word. I have not shrunk from thy judgments, for thou teachest me. O oh, how sweet are thy words unto my throat, yea, sweeter than honey unto my mouth. Through thy commandments I get understanding, therefore I hate all evil ways. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. First lesson is taken out of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, beginning at the first verse. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith the Lord God, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore my people shall know my name, 
Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye unclean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. Here ends the lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken out of the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 2, beginning at the fifth verse. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak? But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honour, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection unto him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. 
And again I will put my trust in him, and again behold I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succour them that are tempted. Here ends the lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, 
perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. With our diocese today, we pray for the Christchurch Hospital's chaplaincy service. And within that chaplaincy service, we pray for the Reverend Alexa Evenden and Mrs Donna Reed. We pray too for the Christchurch Hospital's chaplaincy board. We pray for St George's Hospital and their chaplain, the Reverend Philip Robinson formerly vicar of this parish of St. Mary's in Timaru. We pray for the South Canterbury Ecumenical Hospital Chaplain in Timaru, the Reverend Alan Cummins. And we pray for the Elder Care Project and for their coordinator, the Reverend Anne Russell Brighty. Almighty God, we pray for these various healthcare initiatives and chaplaincies. We ask your blessing for those who minister in your name in those places and in these hospitals. I pray too for those to whom they minister. May they bring comfort And may your spirit bring healing. We pray for Aotearoa New Zealand as it prepares to enter lockdown at 11.59pm this evening. Dear God, as we prepare to enter this time of solitude. I pray for order and peace to reign in our hearts and in the nation. I pray for a spirit of care and consideration in the hearts and minds of your people as they interact with each other. whether by phone or over the fence or staying in the same house for these weeks of lockdown. May we be kind to one another, compassionate and understanding. May we bear with one another as they bear with us. I pray for the people and parish of Timaru and St Mary's. I ask your blessing upon them this night. Be near with them, O oh God. Bind them together and keep them in the knowledge and love of you and fellowship with one another, with the whole body of Christ and its members 
within this parish. I pray for those who are sick or in any need, especially remembering those with the coronavirus at this time. Christ Jesus, as you brought healing in your way and the promise of eternal life through your death and resurrection. And as you promised the Spirit to be poured out upon the world, which was accomplished in due course. So now, O oh Lord God, may your healing spirit be present to those in any need or sickness, whether of mind, body or spirit. Bring them to health and to wholeness. And for those waiting in uncertainty, bring them comfort and ease their distress. We hold before you in silence those who have asked for our prayers and those for whom we pray especially. Continue to pray for our own needs and our own concerns and giving thanks for the goodnesses that we have received. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.